just working on stuff today and I want to show you a few things that are really going to help you regain control over this. I say it all the time, but this is your instrument. This is your pencil. And if you let this too much control, all your stories are going to sound exactly the same. Today is about regaining control over the instrument. And it all starts with um, a few tips and it really starts from within. And that's coming up. Hi, my name is David Rollman. Welcome to this channel, which is all about helping guitar players like you, like me, like, like all of us, find our voice on the instrument and develop it to tell our own personal musical story. And today is all about improv, but focused, targeted improv. We're gonna work in the key of A makes a legend, but this can work with any backing track. It really doesn't matter. Although I suggest a backing track that is in the same key and that loops around so that you can really work on this. But first, let's talk about the problem. The problem is that the guitar oftentimes kind of, um, kind of takes the lead. If I asked, if um, I asked someone to play over this backing track, myself, for example, if I asked myself to play over this, um, you might sound, uh, you might have something like this. So, not that it sounds horrible, um, but it sounds a particular way. And if you ask me again to play over this again, this is what you might get again. <laughs> yeah, with all the bad notes and stuff, right? But um, w what happened there? Well, what happened is that I played fast right away. Um, I was a little bit nervous, often. If I have to play in front of an audience or cameras or something, I'm a little nervous. And so I feel this unhealthy voice telling me, you gotta prove yourself. You've got a guitar in your hand, prove that you are worthy of holding it and uh, start playing the things that, I hate that voice, I hate it. But we all kind of hear it sometimes. And the, what happens is that the fingers are saying to the brain, hey, I got this, I practiced this stuff before, I got it, let me take over, let me show you, and this is what happened. All those things, right? Fingers are, you know, they, 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 have, the, uh, they have a complex, they want to take over. You should regain control over your fingers. So how do we do that and how are, can we develop a sense of uh, musicality and, and kind of regain control over the fingers? The, the fingers should, should serve our inner musician, really. It all starts with intervals, and that's why I push this so much. I talk about intervals all the time. So the first thing, you need to know your intervals, and the second thing, you need to, to know how to practice this stuff. I'm not going to do a full interval lesson because I've covered that extensively in, in our previous lessons, but a quick reminder, an interval is what makes music sound the way it does. If I play a note by itself, that's a sound. It's just a note, a sound. Now if I play that same note in relation to something else, I become something. And some of these notes are gonna blend harmoniously with what's going on in the, in the back, but some are maybe gonna clash a little bit. Right? But that's what, um, what, what carries the emotional uh, appeal of music. It's those intervals. And so if we can master the sound of these intervals and understand what they're going to do, we regain control and we can just call on at will on these intervals so that our fingers take over, then we're going to be more in control of our music. So that's the first thing. We need to know our intervals. Um, I will refer to you to a full interval lesson and um, also... You should check out my uh, music theory DNA. I'll leave a link below. That's free, and that'll give you some um, good tips as to how to start. But basically, uh, an interval being the the, dis the distance between two notes, um, we have a variety of different intervals. Uh, that's what makes you know one scale different from the other. Let me give you a master 
scale shape that is very, very useful. This scale is the major scale in, in uh, the caged uh, format, in the E of the caged format. That's a whole different topic. But basically, here's the shape I want you to learn. We're going to start on the A note, low E string, fifth fret. We've got frets 5-7, 4-5-7, 4-6-7, 4-6-7, 5-7, 5-7, 5-7, 5-7, 5-7, 5-7, 5-7, 5-7, 5-7, 5-7, 5-7, 5-7, 5-7, 5-7, 5-7, 5-7, 5-7, 5-7, 5-7
da 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 da. Something we can control, because we want our mind to be involved in the process. We want to be able to say, that was a third at any given point, or that was a fifth, or whatever it is. It's super important. And once we slow things down, we can start targeting some notes. Let's make ourselves a little uh, challenge here. Let's uh, play a lick and land on the 13th. Okay, so I'll start playing. That's it. That's Try that again with the ninth. Sounds cool. I like it. There's another ninth. Um, let's now target the, um, the fourth. And as you're doing this, you are taking a mental note of how that note makes you feel. That's very important because now you can recall those emotions in your playing. And I, I realize that, you know, you're not always going to play like that. Not that it sounds bad, but if you want to speed things up, if you did this work five minutes every day, you'll start to feel some changes in your playing. Even if you play at full speed and and you play, you know, the lakes that you're used to playing, you're going to see some notes that are being targeted that are coming out. Because that connection, there's a strong invisible connection between your inner thoughts, your mind, like that is in control, and the delivery. And your fingers are going to remember those things. If you work slowly and your mind is engaged, it's going to come out at some point. And that's what I want you to work on. So, you can uh, download the free loop that I was uh, playing here to practice this with uh, the charts. And um, also, I really recommend that you check out that free music theory DNA if you haven't already. All you need to do is visit the link below, enter a valid email address, and I'll be sending you that um, uh, free email course and also the backing track here. And uh, if this was your first visit, you should consider subscribing because every week, free videos come out like this one, helping guitar players find their voice on the instrument and, and develop it to tell your own musical story. I strongly believe that if you do the work, you're going to be unique on the instrument and people are going to really enjoy what you have to say. I, I think there's something awesome in each one of us that needs to be brought out. Don't try to be a clone of anyone else. Be yourself on the instrument. Let's work on this together. Thank you so much for watching this video. I'll see you very soon. Practice well.